<laughs> what do you think were, were the pros and cons of the Attitude Era? I mean, that's whew, that's a loaded. That's a lot. Pros and cons. Um, the pros is if you could wrestle, you were golden because the agents would come up to you. For now, if you watch current wrestling, it's very dialed in, very scripted, very controlled. Attitude Era, the agent would come up to you. Uh, they were called agents then. Now they're producers, but they're agents back then. They would come up and be like, "Hey, they want this at the end. If it if it if it looks great, we're taking the credit. If it's bad, you're getting the heat." <laughs> and they would walk off. Don't make us look bad. Okay. So the pro was they left it up in our hands. Now the negative of leaving it up to our hands is we tried to out one another with the chair shots and the intensity and stuff. Um, pro, uh, you could push the limits with. I don't want to say vulgarity, but sexuality and cursings and the suckets and this and that. And it was a good role model for kids going around in school going, suck it. You know, I'm sure a uh, lot of kids got detention from that. Pros, <laughs> pros. Uh, everything had a storyline all the way down to Shotgun Saturday night. Everybody had a storyline. So every win and loss meant something to elevate you here or elevate somebody. You always had a piece of that puzzle you were always in the puzzle your piece was crucial to finish the puzzle somewhere somehow so you always had a story like uh another pro was competition with wcw in the monday night Wars. so everybody also not only because they had the talent and they had the open range like the wild wild west to outdo each other outwork each other you competed against the whole other brand and a company so that elevated that so which in turn pro elevated money and contracts when things came up and gave you negotiating things so um the biggest negative negatives come from with everybody thriving and pushing each other so hard to push their limits to the best thing or to the edge of insanity came injuries. Mm -hmm. And with those injuries came either career ending or lifetime, lifelong problems, but also created, uh, not created, it always been there, but drug addiction for the injuries. When an injury's getting treated and that, and the show must go on, you know. Oh, I got I, I got food poisoning. Well, okay. Well, um, yeah, you got 10 minutes tonight. And, <laughs> you know, we're going to do this and this and that. Like, they never heard you say you got food poisoning. They're like, you know, and, but you didn't argue it either because you knew that there was like 15 other gunslingers waiting in the wings ready to take that spot. Like, when I tore my pack in Ontario, I didn't tell them or anything because... I just started like in an angle, like it was so easy to like just swerve the angle another way. It wasn't the teeth weren't sunk in yet until we were like the full on brood and it started gaining momentum. And then maybe you could have, but still, did Edge and Christian ever really need me at a certain point anyway? So if you were hurt and you spoke up and you're out, then it would have been E and C even quicker, you know. So, uh, so, but the biggest negative, I guess, what came. The, I, I would say was the prescription drugs because of uh, everybody pushing themselves to the limit. That's the biggest negative. Everything else, I, I like a lot more pros, but but uh, on a bigger scale of life and j liberty, j whatever, I, that's a serious thing, you it's know. Which one. which 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 it sprung eventually. The uh, you know I used to get the letters that they would uh, openly like offer you to pay for your recovery or go to rehab and stuff like that. So it opened that up, but then. So I guess the positive is like wrestling was probably always like that, but it was just on a big social media is a, in the eye more now. So people seeing it, you didn't hear about all the suicides and deaths of the older guys coming up to that point. But so brung awareness, and and now I think that's part of where uh, professional wrestling is today with the different sizes and stuff. But then you got the Darby Allens that are like these edge cutting guys pushing things to the thing. So it, you know. It's all over the place, but I hope I covered that question. I was all no, over I the mean, place. No, I mean, but I, I like, you, you covered multiple things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love being part of the Attitude Era, and I think that's why I'm still wrestling every weekend this day. Like, I mean, if you think about it, the last time I was on TV might have been 2004 or 2006 with the Undertaker Viscera match. Like, but but prior to that, I was under a contract not used. So then, really, like 2000s when I dropped off, and I was just constantly going to England for 20 years. So nobody's seen me when I was in England. They didn't know I was still wrestling. Heck, when I popped up. They would, in the States, they would think, oh, we thought you are dead. And I still see some of your damn YouTube comments that think I'm dead and stuff. And I just, can girls alive? We're so glad he has a show. Thank you for being <laughs> glad to have a show. And thank you for being glad I'm happy. But no, damn it, I'm not dead. He's a no. vampire. He's going to live forever. Yeah. I thought it was on social media. I, obviously, I haven't been on it enough <laughs> in wrestling. I wrestle every weekend. I'm super blessed. And that was because how powerful that attitude is. It made star power. If you were yes. in that era, no matter, shotgun, to Raw, to the WrestleMania, anywhere, even Shotgun Saturday Night, equated 
equal star power because it was so strong and 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 it's just so at the end of the time yeah this is something next episode i i want to delve deeper into i have so many questions okay 